Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we hear from the Gospel reading today, the calling of the Twelve Apostles. This reminds us of God's will to make all of us His disciples. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. 
brothers and sisters, now our high priest has obtained so much more excellent a ministry as he is mediator of a better covenant and acted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, no place would have been sought for a second one. But he finds fault with them and says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will conclude a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they did not stand by my covenant, and I ignored them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will establish with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds, and I will write them upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach each one his fellow citizen and kin, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from least to greatest. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sins no more. When he speaks of a new covenant, he declares the first one obsolete. And what has become obsolete and has grown old is close to disappearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindness and truth shall meet. Kindness and truth shall meet. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Kindness and truth shall meet. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. Kindness and truth shall meet. Please stand. was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he named Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom he named Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, 
Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Cariot, who betrayed him. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, we have begun hearing the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. And so in the past few days, perhaps you remember our gospel reading of Jesus preaching in the synagogue, Jesus going around the different places to heal the sick, to cure those who are possessed by demons, people coming toward him to receive blessings, graces coming from him. But today, we hear one ministry of Jesus, one purpose of Jesus, and that is to call disciples. Jesus wanted to turn men into disciples. For Jesus, we are not just bystanders, onlookers. We must be his disciples. In our gospel reading today, we hear the calling of the twelve apostles. He did not just want people to follow him at the back or to look after him. Jesus wanted men and people to become his disciples. Hindi lang gusto ng Panginoon na humahabol lang tayo sa Kanya, hihingi ng tulong sa Kanya, hihingi ng biyaya sa Kanya. Ang nais ni Jesus, tayo ay maging alagad niya. And so let us ask ourselves today, are you a disciple? Or do you just want to call yourself, Father, I am just an ordinary mass goer. I am just a bystander. I am just an onlooker. Jesus wants you to become a disciple. Sabi nila, Father, paano mo malalaman kung ang simbahan ay katoliko? Sabi ko paano kapag ang mga tao ayaw umupo sa harapan? <clears throat> Daming upuan dito sa harapan, no? Ang laki ng Manila Cathedral. <laughs> But Catholics would choose the farthest pews. Those at the back, those at the sides. Dalawa lang yan. Either ayaw niyong makita ko kayo o ayaw niyong makita ako. But Jesus wants us to become disciples. Not onlookers. Not bystanders. I want you to become a disciple. Someone who would be close to Jesus. Someone who would live with Him. Someone who would truly follow Him. That is the message of our first reading today. God sent Jesus to make a new covenant. A covenant a better covenant, a better promise, and a better people who would become better partners of God in this covenant. Not just the old covenant 
when people would not truly follow him, but people of the new covenant with the law of God in their hearts, becoming not bystanders, but becoming disciples of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, be a disciple. Sabi ko nga sa mga nagtatrabaho minsan sa simbahan, ilang taon ka ng empleyado dito. Minsan mahigit sampung taon na. But many times, church workers would look at themselves as just that, employees. Empleyado lang naman ako. Kaya, ang oras ko para sa Panginoon, ito din lang. No? Kasi empleyado lang naman ako. How many of us would look at ourselves as just that? Ordinary people, ordinary employees, ordinary mass goers. But we have not become disciples. My dear brothers and sisters, in this celebration of the Mass, let us take seriously the action of Jesus. He did not just went around curing the sick, preaching the good news. He made men his disciples. Let us become disciples. Let us allow Jesus to make us and transform us into his disciples. Amen. Please stand. As God's holy people called in different ways to spread the good news of the kingdom, we present our needs before our Father who cares for us. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That those called in the church to lead the people of God may have the courage to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who seek God may find enlightenment and respond willingly to God's invitation to be with Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people may recognize the voice of Christ calling them to a life of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God help us repair the harm that we have inflicted upon each other and the divisions we have created among our people. May God send the grace of His Spirit to heal our divisions and gift us with a, grief, with a unity for which Jesus prayed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may receive comfort and strength from those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may rest in the peace of Christ's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, when you call us in the events of everyday life, let your Spirit give each of us the strength to say, Lord, here I am. I come to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh,